Well, my first guest joins me in studio. Mr. James Nelson is the CEO of Solar 3D Incorporated. SLTD is their stock symbol. Uh, Jim, good to have you in the program. Thanks, Don. Great to be here. Well, I really enjoyed researching the company. It was fascinating information. You're developing a breakthrough three-dimensional solar cell technology. Give us a general overview, if you would, please. Sure. It all begins with our objectives. The fact is that we look to change the world, change the world of electrical power. Everybody talks about green energy because it's fashionable, but frankly, it, it hasn't worked economically. Less than 1% of the world's power is supplied by solar. Wow. And bottom line is, we think there's an opportunity there as a result of that. We have a real spiritual feeling about this, too. We think that people ought to find out uh, how to use solar power and that ultimately it will be running uh, most of the power that we supply. Uh, the fact is that uh, we have experts from a couple of different fields. One is photo photovoltaics, and the mm -hmm. other one is um, fiber optics. I've been in private equity for a long time, and bringing new advice and new point of view from another industry always turns out to be good for the industry. And so we've come up, after a long analysis and discussion, with this three-dimensional approach to the solar cell. And uh, we think it's going to be an amazing thing to, to get more power out of the solar cell. Now, your website indicates that up to 30% of incident sunlight is actually reflected off of conventional solar cells, thereby you're losing that potential power. Tell us about that. Well, the solar cell has been the same for 100 years, basically. Nobody's really re-engineered it. They get marginal improvements as time goes on. But there are two major factors that make the current conventional technology not work. One is the fact that the light, the incident sunlight, gets reflected back into space by the standard two-dimensional uh, mirror, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the second is that the material ends up being relatively thick. And so a lot of the electrons that are knocked loose by uh, sunlight hitting the cell uh, end up being reabsorbed in the material. So our approach is to re-engineer the solar cell into our three-dimensional design to attack those two problems, to eliminate uh, or dramatically reduce reflection and to eliminate reabsorption of the electrons. Well, can we get a little more into that? I mean, how does your three-dimensional design help capture some of the uh, sunlight and, and the power from that that the conventional systems end up losing? Yeah. As, as I mentioned to you, we are looking to eliminate the two principal problems. The f and we do it through four things. The first is our solar collectors on the surface of the solar cell uh, they will, they'll be engineered to be essentially gather the light and put it into the three-dimensional structure below. Uh, we see ourselves as predators of sunlight, if you will. I, I think of the <laughs> Venus flytrap. If the sunlight hits the cell, we're going to grab it and keep it. Okay. And then we direct it down into number two, which is our three-dimensional photovoltaic structure. Once the sunlight's in there, it's trapped, and it, ca it won't reflect. It can't get out and it bounces around until all of the energy from the site light is absorbed. The third thing is that as opposed to a standard conventional cell in current technology uh, where the absorption is uh, on a thick uh, surface, uh, we're going to have very thin absorbing regions. So there's a very short distance for the electrons that are knocked loose to travel to the uh, contacts where the current is produced. As a result, there will be uh, virtually no reabsorption. And the final thing might seem a little minor, but the contacts are going to be under the surface, whereas mm -hmm. in conventional technology, the contacts uh, that create the current are on top of the I surface, see. and they create a shadow. And you can imagine the yeah. shadow just takes away that small fraction of an ability to absorb the sunlight. So that's how we're going to do it. You know, you have a statistic at your website that I've not seen before, whereby the sun showers the earth with enough energy in one hour to power the entire world for one year. That is amazing. It is an amazing number. In fact, if you look at the exact numbers, the numbers are mind-boggling. A joule is the amount of energy that is used to essentially lift an apple one meter. And uh, the sun puts out 3,800,000 exajoules per year. An exajoule is 10 to the 18th power. Wow. So there are zillions and zillions of, the, of uh, uh, joules coming from the sun showering upon the earth. To put that in perspective, the total amount of electricity used by human beings is about 60 exajoules. So 
and then the total amount of power is around 500 exajoules. So literally to cover our electrical needs is, takes about six minutes of sunlight and the, uh, to cover all of the power is about an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes now. You didn't know that we were going to bring you back to Calculus 220, did you? Again, the company is Solar 3D, SLTD is their stock symbol. Uh, given that staggering amount of solar power that's hitting us on, on a daily basis, it really all comes down to creating a, uh, a capture and conversion process, right? That's true, uh, although it really boils down to economics. There's a lot of sunlight coming in. I think we're supposed to figure out how to use that sunlight, but right now the current technology just doesn't do it from an economic standpoint. It's too expensive for people, and frankly, they've had to subsidize it from government. But our objective is to reach grid parity or better to make solar the, the power of choice, not just from a green standpoint so it's clean, but also from an economic standpoint. Now, of course, solar has been pretty much recession-proof. It's grown 35% per year while we've all been struggling, so you must have a pretty good optimism for the next four or five years. Well, let's say the next, the next 30 to 50 years. Okay. And most analysts think that solar is going to continue to be the fastest-growing industry in the world for 30 years to come. Okay. And when you start talking about how much growth there's going to be in the next few years, it's almost irrelevant when you look at what can really happen. Right now, less than 1% of the power needs of the, of the world are supplied by solar. If you can get solar power to grid parity and make it this, the power of choice, that could go from less than 1% to 10, 20, 30% overnight. And then you take an industry that worldwide may be something north of 100 billion to trillions of dollars in, uh, in a matter of a short period of time. So 35% growth. Is, uh, is modest compared to what could happen if we can really make this thing at grid parity. Well, Jim, when do you think we're going to see products with your technology uh, hit the market? Well, we're really focused on developing our prototype right now. We've done a lot of analysis and some simulation, and so now we're making a physical prototype as we speak. That'll happen sometime next year. After that, uh, products with our uh, of course, the market for this is going to be all over the place. Of course. Right now, there are solar cells on very small products up to huge power farms. And we will, do, we will be able to do things just like that. But that's probably a little ways off. Focus is on the prototype right now. Once we get the prototype, we'll be looking to move into the next step. Again, Solar 3D, again, SLTD is their stock symbol. Jim, we're almost out of time, but I do want to ask why you think this is a good time right now for folks to take a closer look at Solar 3D. Well, this is one of those things where we are very confident that this is going to work. If it, if it works, it is a complete game changer mm -hmm. in the electrical power industry. It makes solar accessible to everybody. And uh, once that happens, as I say, uh, the, the numbers are staggering what this could end up being. Uh, right now, it's, it's inexpensive relative to what it will be if, uh, if the things come off as we believe and are confident that it will. It's a great time to be investing. Well, we're initiating coverage of the company this week. We're going to be watching you very closely throughout the first quarter of 2011. Uh, looking forward to you coming by and giving us some updates during that period of time. Again, Solar 3D, SLTD is their stock symbol. Uh, fascinating education today. Thanks so much. Thanks, Don. Good being with you.